Hi, everybody. This is Ms. Shembri, and I'm here with Mr. Lopez. And we are so excited to have everybody back and on campus and in person. And we just wanted to go over a few things that you might be wondering and some important things that you're going to need to know uh, while being back on campus after such a long time. We're so happy you're here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Mr. Lopez. I'm the principal here at Del Mar High School. And we are excited for you guys to be joining us. If you're watching this, you either are sitting right now in your advisory class asking a lot of questions, or you might have got access to this early for some reason. So in any case, um, you know, I think I don't have to keep talking about what a difficult year it's been, um, I think, for all of us. And you might be thinking of just sort of what your last year and a half looked like. Um, and so I think in, in being mindful of that, just think about with people's experiences and what they have, just to think about everyone's feelings and what they're going through and how they've processed this past year. And um, recognizing that some students and some individuals and teachers and parents and family members have taken this struggle on in different ways. And so just be mindful of that. Be as supportive as you can be. Um, and anything that we can do to help one another um, during this time, I think is really essential and important and really part of our Del Mar High School culture. So, so the first thing I wanted to talk about, these are just a couple items that have popped up that we want to make sure that we address. Um, the first thing, masks, and I know this was communicated, but I just want to be really clear on the mask policy, not only at our school site, but it's our mask policy across the district. Um, and the way to, distinct, uh, to put it into the simplest terms, indoors, masks must be at worn, worn at all times. So regardless of your vaccination, you have to wear a mask indoors at all times. The second that you step into a classroom or some sort of room, you have to be wearing a mask. So if you step into a classroom or you step into the restroom or you go into the gym, make sure that you have a mask available at all times. If, you, if one breaks or you need one, teachers have them. We also have a ton up here in the front office. So let us know how we can support. Um, and then on the other side of that for outdoors, outdoors, it's optional. It's recommended for individuals who are not vaccinated. But again, outdoors, it's really what you are most comfortable with. Um, so just wanted to really be clear about those. So again, indoors, always required. Outdoors, it's your own preference. So just be mindful of that. Um, and one of the things that you that you may be aware of, social distancing isn't something that um, we are required of anymore. So just please be aware of individuals' personal space um, and just be mindful of where people are sitting and giving people space when walking through the hallways and stuff, if you can at all possible. Um, and then just the biggest thing that I really want to stress, and this is for students and for families, so our district has put a very clear rule that masks must be worn indoors at all times. Any student who refuses to wear a mask indoor or does not want to follow those procedures, um, you will be moved to virtual learning for the remainder of the school year. So again, I know sometimes we have masks or sometimes we forget to put them on when we're walking in. You really need to be mindful when you walk into a space, mask goes up. Um, the second that you defy that is when we will be meeting with families to talk a little bit about next steps and what that looks like. And just a reminder, mask is gonna be over nose and mouth. Um, it's not like wearing it like this. So it does cover your nose and your mouth at all times. Again, that's a non-negotiable and regardless of your vaccination, you are required to wear a mask indoors. So I just wanna highlight a couple of our mental health supports. So um, as Mr. Lopez mentioned earlier, we know this has been obviously, as we all know, I sound like a broken record. It's been very challenging um, last year and a half. And we wanna make sure that you're feeling supported when you come back on campus. For some of you, this is your first time on campus, on any school campus in over a year. and so. Um, 
We want to make sure that you're feeling supported. So this is a new addition to our campus. We have a wellness center now. Uh, if you haven't walked around the campus lately, there are new portable buildings over by the science wing, kind of near the parking lot. And so room 83 is a new room. It's in the portables and that is our wellness center. Um, we do have a social worker as well who is uh, working with us through Uplift Family Services and they will be in there uh, should you need anything. The room will also be stocked with any necessities you might need, snacks, uh, first aid, simple band-aids, things like that. Um, school supplies. And then as the school year goes on and we figure out what you guys need, it will, you know, maybe change, but there will be things in there. Um, and it's, I, I believe they got, we got some furniture for that room. Am I right, Mr. Lopez, some cool furniture. Um, so it's just a place where you can go and kind of decompress, deescalate, have a moment, talk to somebody if you need to get any items you might need to get. Um, so that is available and that's new, we're very excited. And then we also are continuing for those students who are returning to Del Mar, um, you might remember this. And for those of you who are new, we work with Cassie, which is a um, counseling, ser counseling service. Um, we have our Cassie counselors that have been on our campus for a while. We've got um, more this year and they will be able to provide counseling services for those who need it. We'll send out more information about how you can be referred to Cassie um as the year kind of gets going here and if you need that immediately or would like more information on that before we send it out your guidance counselor would be the person to talk to if you're looking for some cassie counseling okay bell schedule so i know many of you have seen this i think one of the most are probably a little bit of a confusing thing our first day of school is tomorrow or um, you know, you're probably, you've probably already dealt with this issue, but um, I'm going to just fill you in just in case you uh, may not be aware. On Wednesdays, we don't have first period. So when did, Wednesdays, everybody starts at 835. The reason for that, it's our collaboration day, and we also have advisory. So advisory, you've been assigned an advisory room number. So just make sure that you're aware of who your advisory teacher is. And Ms. Shembury will talk a little bit about advisory later. Um, but we are on an A day, B day rotating schedule. So A day, if you're looking at that, it's a first, second, third, fourth period class. Um, so again, just making sure that you're aware of that. And then our B day is first, fifth, sixth, seventh. So first period, you're seeing your teachers four times a week. Um, everybody else, it ranges anywhere from two to three. Um, so again, if an A day is on a Friday, that following yeah. Monday is gonna be a B day. So again, it's a rotating schedule. So every other day it changes. So it goes A day, B day, A day, B day. So just something to be aware of. Um, and then if you have questions, we have this posted on our website as well. So speaking of advisory, um, we have a new system this year. So for those students who um, have experienced advisory before, this is a little different. Um, so during advisory this year, you will have two options and I will be sending out a schedule probably via Parent Square and posting it on social media and on our website for students to access. Um, so you can see exactly what to expect each week, but each week will look a little different. So on days that are assigned, that means you go to your normal advisory teacher that's on your schedule. So whoever your advisory teacher is, it's listed on your schedule. That's when you will go to that teacher. And there might be things happening that day, like maybe a fire drill, or maybe um, the counselors are gonna come in and talk about programming, or there might be a college and career lesson we want you to make sure that you have access to. So on assigned days, you need to go to your advisory teacher. On open days, and again, these are pre-planned. So open days are gonna be reflected on the schedule. You can't choose when these are. Open days are days where you have two choices. One, you can just go to your normal advisory teacher if that's just where you like to go, no change. Or two, you can choose to see a different teacher. And in order to do that, you need to, there's this picture of this hall pass um, here on the side of the slide. You need to get a, a, a pass from the teacher that you'd like to go see. So for example, if I 
don't want to go to my advisory teacher that day and I want to go see Mr. Lopez and talk to him if he was a teacher and not the principal. I could go to Mr. Lopez with my pass and say, Mr. Lopez, can I come see you tomorrow for advisory so I can finish my test? Or, you know, maybe you were sick and you want to see what you missed. Or maybe you just have a question about some of your homework. You're, the teacher that you'd like to go see and you need to be in agreement and fill out this pass. You do not need to check in with your normal advisory teacher. They are not part of this equation. Just communicate directly with the person that you'd like to go see. And then we'll figure it out from there and your, your attendance will be cleared up. Please remember that students aren't like, you can be turned away. If a teacher says, actually tomorrow, I don't have space in my advisory or tomorrow I'm not gonna be here or tomorrow, you know, may, for whatever reason, they can tell you that you can't come in. And in that case, you need to just go to your normal advisory teacher. Um, this all needs to be sorted out by Tuesday afternoon. The reason being is that on Wednesday morning before advisory, we don't want 1300 students running around campus finding a different place to go. So by Tuesday afternoon, you need to communicate with the teacher you'd like to go see if the next day is an open day and get the pass figured out so that um, you're all set for Wednesday. So this will take us a little getting used to, and I understand it's a little confusing when you haven't seen it in practice, but coming up when we have um, our first open day, which I think is in a couple weeks, um, I'll send out a reminder and I'll explain this one more time. And again, you don't have to change classes. This is just an option. If you're a student who wants that 30 minutes to use it a different way that you see fit, you can, um, you know, some of our students are in SVCTE and they get out early. So maybe seeing the teacher whose class you leave, whatever the case may be, we want to give you a little bit more flexibility this year than we have in the past with advisory. Um, obviously you're aware that our campus is under a lot of construction. So I just wanted to go over some of our entry points on campus. We will not be doing health screenings anymore. So not only for our campus, but for all campuses. Um, so the parts in blue are some of our entry points. And then the orange spot is where our main office entry point is. So in case you're wondering, this top part is going to be where cars and students can drive onto campus to park in the back. Um, so you'll have access to that. And then for students who are walking or riding their bike, you'll have the blue, the following blue boxes where you can enter. So there's going to be a spot by the pack, 16, and then the 68 wing. I highly encourage and recommend people to enter through uh, the main hall. The reason being uh, near room 16, the uh, skateboard racks and the um, bicycle uh, locks are really close by. So you don't have to walk your bike or find your um, walk very far for your skateboard to get locked up. So again, um, this would be my recommendation. Uh, at 835, we close the campus down. So once class starts, we're going to go ahead and lock up all the gates. If you are late or showing up on campus after 835, make sure that you go through the main office. That'll be the only entry point from that from that time on. If you are driving onto campus, you can call the main office and we can open the gate. Um, but please remember, we are a closed campus, so we shouldn't have be letting people in or letting strangers in or anything like that. So be mindful if you are coming late to campus and driving yourself um, onto campus that other cars aren't following you or anything of that nature. So in terms of lunch and student IDs, these kind of go hand in hand, which is you might be wondering why. <laughs> Every student gets lunch for free this year. Doesn't matter who you are, everybody gets free lunch. So in order to access the free lunch, you need to have your ID card, which hopefully, fingers crossed, you picked up uh, when you got your photo taken at registration and when you got your schedule. Um, if for some reason you didn't get an ID card, the if you're watching this during advisory, the, the photographer will be here until 1.30, so you can go at lunchtime and get your picture taken. 
Um, but you need an ID card. So your ID card is important to carry around all the time. You need it to get into dances, sporting events, um, for your lunch, like all kinds of things, you're gonna need your ID card. So um, if for some reason you lose it, don't have one, whatever the case may be, come see me in room 28 and we'll get you hooked up with an ID card. Um, but if you're watching this and it's advisory right now, the photographer will be here till 1.30. So you can go do that. Um, but there is free lunch for everybody. I highly encourage you to take advantage of it. Our new kitchen is amazing. We tasted the food today. It is awesome. Um, so I highly encourage you to take advantage of the free lunch and make sure you have your ID card. Awesome. And I think that's everything that we have to cover. Yay. Well, if you have any questions about anything while you're here and back at school, um, we're just two of the many adults who can answer any questions you might have. Um, so we highly encourage you to reach out and welcome back, everybody. Awesome. Welcome back, everyone. Have a great rest of the first day and a great school year.